Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I want to show you how to make this beautiful hexagon lampshade from one of our lampshade making kits. So this product is ideal for a woven fabric, so that can be any pattern or design or colour of your choice. So it really brings a unique fabric into your home. So here I've got some really lovely fabrics and as you can see, all different shapes and sizes of pattern that you could use for this particular shade. So ideal if you're a curtain maker or cushion maker or just if you're a crafter and you have some leftover fabric at home. This is a brilliant way of using that up or choosing something very bespoke for your home. So the hexagon itself is a really contemporary shape, been really popular over the last few years and it's something that's seen in maths and in science, but also in art and nature. So if you think of something like the humble honeybee, say, that builds its honeycomb from hexagons. So it's something that adds a complete wow factor to your home. So let's have a little look and see what's in our kit. So here we have it, nicely boxed, quite compact. And on every box, you'll find your covering size. So this particular shade is available in a 15 centimetre, 20 centimetre, 30 centimetre and 40 centimetre diameter. That means it's perfect for a lamp shade here, like a, on a lamp base, um, as you can see. And it's also great for a pendant light as well. So it's super versatile and can kind of work in any point of your home. So let's have a little look in the box. So first of all, we have our frames and these are epoxy coated frames. Um, you have two, so they come in a pair. This is your plain frame, as you can see, and this is your utility frame. And as you see in the centre here on the utility frame, we have a small adapter and that makes it fit a UK fitting, a B22. And you'll see these all around your home. So that's the most common fitting we have here in the UK. But you can also pop this out to make a wider opening and that's good for a European fitting. And I've got one of those here. So if you shop at somewhere like Ikea, um, you'll see these there. So again, dead versatile. We also have our lampshade making PVC. And this is rolled up neatly in your box, but I have one already here that's flat. So this is the real McCoy. Um, it's not just a sticky back plastic, it's exactly what you would expect to see on the high street and it's professional and high quality. It's anti-static, it's anti-yellowing and it's also been rigorously tested. Um, for light, but also what's most important is for fire safety. So this is exactly what you can expect to see in a shade on the high street. So professional and high quality. Just on the back here, it's got um, grid lines. You don't really need to worry about those because this panel is already cut to size for you. Um, so this is all done and you don't even need to get your tape measure out. And just going back to the front, you'll notice along the length there is a kiss cut. So if I just bend that back, you can just see that there's a small groove that's been cut into the panel all the way along. And that's to help create the correct fabric margin a little bit later on. So I'll show you that as part of the demonstration. So all the work done there for you on the panel. We also have our double-sided high-tack tape. And this tape is really quite sticky. So just to show you, it's flexible, it's also transparent, and it has a red backing tape on it. And we're gonna use this later on to put the shade together. Also in our box, we have our finishing tool. And this is so along the front edge and the bottom here as well, you can use this to tuck all the fabric underneath and that gives you that super professional finish. So we can use the long sides or the point or the serrated edge and at the final stages of the demo, I'll show you how to use this. And as with all of our kits, 
we have our professional photo instructions. Lots of hints and tips in here. Uh, takes you through every single step of making up the shade. So even if you're a beginner crafter, this is perfect for starting out making lampshades. Um, and you can follow those through. So, first of all, let's just have a little chat about fabrics. As I mentioned before, you need to use a woven fabric um, with these kits. And this is a lightweight craft cotton but even a medium weight upholstery cotton would also be fine. Um, and you just need to think a little bit about direction as well, and we'll talk about that through the demonstration. So this, as you can see here, I've got a lovely robots um, pattern, which would be fantastic for a child's room. And what you need to do is just make sure that that's pressed and lay that down on your surface. Just before I go any further, in terms of tools that you might need at home to be able to make up the kit, you need nothing more really than a pair of fabric scissors, or you might prefer to use a craft knife. If you're using a craft knife, obviously make sure you've got something like a cutting mat protecting your table. Clean flat surface as well, so something like a kitchen table is great. You could also use one of these. This is a seam roller, and this is great for closing the seams of the shade. Um, you might have one maybe if you're a card maker or just in your wallpapering kit, but just a useful item to have. So as you can see, you don't need that much in terms of equipment to be able to make um, the shade up. So we're just going to take our PVC panel and we're going to lay it with the paper backing face down because we're actually going to peel that away. So I'm just going to line this up and make sure that I'm following the pattern here on my robots just to make sure that I've got it in position and I'm happy with that. And then all we need to do is simply take the backing paper off, there we go, and just peel back around about five to ten centimetres, it doesn't need to be any more than that. And we're just going to simply position that onto the wrong side of our fabric. And I just use my fist to rub that in place. And then if you just lift up the panel slightly, you can pull the paper along. And again, around about ten centimetres at a time is absolutely fine. And just keep pulling that away and rubbing down and all you're doing is you're adhering the PVC onto the fabric. And just keep moving that along and as you get nearer the end you can pull a little bit more away because it becomes a little bit easier. And I'm just going to pull that away now all together. There we go and just give it a little bit of a smooth over. And just before you go any further, I normally just then flip that over and just make sure that it's stuck down. And also make sure there's no little fabric frays that have got caught underneath, or there's any lumps or bumps. Now that is looking lovely. That's exactly what I wanted. So just flip it back over, and our next stage is to cut that out. So I'm just gonna use the fabric scissors and I just start on the short end and all you're doing is using the edge of the PVC as a bit of a guide for your scissors. So just onto the long and just keep and if there's any kind of jagged edges don't worry too much at this stage because we're just looking for a cut along the edge. Those edges aren't going to be seen at all because you're going to tuck those under to give you that gorgeous professional finish. There we go. So that's our PVC now all cut out. So we're now going to work with those kiss cuts that we talked about at the beginning. So simply fold back the kiss cut and as you get towards the center you'll just hear a cracking sound 
and that means that the plastic is now coming apart the PVC is breaking open and then just do exactly the same on the opposite side there we go and we're just going to lift now what I tend to do is I just push one down and lift one up and then you're just going to peel away the kiss cut now if you have a fraying fabric just take it easy the frays don't matter too much but we don't want to be ripping it away and ripping half of the fabric margin away with it so just gently take that away and then exactly the same on the opposite side so just push and lift And if there are any little frays, and I've just got a couple here, I'm just going to get those out of the way now. Okay, and just before we finish up with our panel, we just now need to take our double-sided tape. And we're just going to simply run a line of double-sided tape along one of the short edges. So this should only be on the PVC, it shouldn't be touching the fabric. And that's going to close up our shade at the end. And we're going to leave the backing tape on. We're not going to take that off at this stage. So there we have it. That's our panel finished with now. So now we just need to work with our frames. So just before we start applying our tape, if you notice, if you look on your frames, where the epoxy coating has been applied, there'll be some joins and it'll be in the centre of one of the sides of your hexagon. So I'm just going to go around and find those. There they are. And we're just going to pop those on top of each other. And we need to just mark this because it just needs to be a little bit clearer. So with them sitting on top of each other, we're simply going to make sure that that mark is clear. You won't see this at all at the end. So just make sure they're marked. Yep, yeah, and that's both of those are marked equally. And we're going to use those to line up a little bit later on. So taking your tape we're now going to apply this onto the rings and this is what kind of holds the whole frame together so take your tape and pop it on i'm just going to use that mark actually as my starting point and all we're trying to do is get the frame to sit between the two edges of the tape so just moving around i move around about five centimeters at a time and you're just working back towards where you started. And just a little tip here, once you get to the point where the two tapes meet, I just usually snip away just a little bit before. So you've got a little tiny white gap and that just for two reasons works quite well. So one, it means you can see where your tapes meet and two, if you overlap them, it can be a little bit trickier to lift uh, the backing off. So just making life easy for ourselves really. Now this part is quite important. We're just going to take our fingers and our thumbs and we're going to push the tape down and round the frame. So what we're doing here is we're kind of rolling the tape as much as possible around the frame. And that means it's super sticky for the next stage. I'm just pushing round those corners. There we go. And then we're going to do exactly the same on our utility frames. So I'm just going to use that mark again and start from there. Just getting the positioning right. There we go, back to our meeting point and then we're just going to snip that away and then same again, just pushing the tape around with your fingers and your thumbs to give that kind of all over coverage. There we go, 
So just before we start rolling our frames, you just need to think about directions. So let me just turn this round. Um, so I have a directional print here with these lovely robots on and we do need to think about which way we want this up. So with a directional print, if you wanted a table lampshade, you would put your utility ring at the bottom. We then have our shade, our PVC, and then our plain ring on top like that. So you can see how your lamp base would fit here. If you want it the other way round, you would just simply switch these over. So you'd put your plain ring at the bottom and this would be for a pendant shade. So hang in from the ceiling, have your lamp shade there, and then you would have your utility ring on the top. So you can see how you'd need to think before you make up the shade if you've got a directional print. If you have something like a spot or a stripe or an all over pattern, it doesn't make any difference at all because you then you can simply turn uh, the shade around to suit whichever needs you've got. So let's have a look at rolling our rings. So I'm just going to position this on the table and we're rolling towards our tape. And I want to make this as a lamp base. So then I'm going to put my utility ring here and my plain ring here. I find this really handy doing it like this. If I'm making a specific shade with a specific direction, just popping your rings on each side so you don't make any mistakes. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take off our backing tape. Now do be careful at this point when you're lifting the tape that you only lift off the red backing. And as you can see, the tape is clear and find your ends and there we go and then remember those little marks the pencil marks we put on we're going to use those now so what we need to do is we need to take our first ring and position it so the mark sits on the short edge of the PVC and the way you want to position your ring is so that it's just literally a couple of millimetres in on the PVC. The ring should not be touching the fabric. So it's all sitting onto the PVC. Then take the second ring, and I'm just going to have a look before I pick it up, where are my marks? It's there. So, and do exactly the same on this side. So my mark is lining up. And if it's not right, you can just lift it off. It will move back. And the same, just sitting it on the PVC. And then we're now going to roll these frames. Now, just a top tip, because of the hexagon shape, you need to very carefully fold them over. So what you want to happen is, is you want the PVC to catch here on the tape. So you need to press down quite firmly. And just making sure, you can see already, the strength in the tape and how that's forming that structure so we're just going to and you can if you want do these almost one at a time so just rolling and making sure we're picking up the nice corner here and again and you've got quite a lot of control so you can here like you just saw lift off if you need to there we go just making sure that that's there yeah there we go. And just our kind of final length. Yep, that's all firm. And then what I tend to do is just tip that now towards me. So you can see here we've got the backing tape. So we're just going to take that off. And then I just like to line up the edges of the PVC to make sure that it's really straight. So just fold that down. Make sure that that edge lines up and it does, that's beautiful. And then you're just very gently pushing those together. Don't push down on here because you will create a little bit of a dent. So we're just literally pushing that into place and making sure that that's joined. And this is where your seam roller can come in really handy. So you just can roll along the seam there and that will just join that together. If you don't have a seam roller, alternatively, you just give it a really good firm press down using your fingers. So it's starting to look like a shade now. 
Our next stage, you will have your seam where the two panels have met and that will leave you with an overlap of fabric. So what we need to do is we just need to cut away the inside one. So we've not got two layers there. So just using the tips of your scissors, we're just literally going to cut in and cut out a kind of an oblong shape. And then we're just going to turn over and repeat on the other side. There we go. And our next stage, and just going back to the plain side, is we're just going to take our fabric. And I always start at the seam, just so I know where I'm starting and finishing. And we're literally going to push the fabric over the top of the frame. And we're just going to tuck it slightly with our fingers, push it on to the sticky underneath. So onto the double-sided tape, there we can see. And what that's given us is that beautiful, crisp edge. And that just gives us that neatness that we're looking for. And also, it looks professional quality as well. So, same again. And don't worry about the spokes at the moment, because we're going to deal with those. Uh, when we come to them in the next stage. So just pushing in and if it's become a little bit stuck you know and it's folded just lift it up. So we're now at the stage where we're going to use our finishing tool to tuck all the fabric on the edges into the frame. So that's what that margin was earlier on. That's the allowance that was given to us with the kiss cut. So if you just turn the frame on its side, the idea here is not to put too much pressure on the frame with your fingers because we need to leave it clear to be able to get the fabric underneath. And we just need to simply tuck underneath. And once you get going, you can hear already that starting to go underneath. I use the point, I just feel more comfortable with that, but you can use the longer for putting all the straggly frays underneath as well. So we're just simply going to go round. There we go. And once you get going, the fabric goes under quite easily. So just making sure that the fabric stays tight. And just on the corners there, you might just need to dig in. You have to be quite firm. Don't be too gentle, but you don't want to be so firm that you push the point out through the edge of the fabric as well. So just turning as I'm going. There we go. And if there's any loose little frays, you can use the longer side to kind of brush those underneath. So that's one side complete and then we're going to move on to the other side. So this is the side with the utility and what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to cut our spokes. So to cut the spokes all you need to do is just take the tips of your scissors and line them up with the spoke underneath and cut gently into the fabric. There we go. And what that will do is it will just create, uh, as you can see there, a split and that will sit either side of your spokes. So let me just show you again. You don't want to be cutting too far in, so really only up to the frame. And there we go. And then the final one. And the same again with this one. I'm just going to start at my seam. And we're just going to push the fabric behind the spoke straight away. That's great. That's gone in nicely. And then just work our way round. So I tend to go from left to right. But that's just, again, personal preference. And just pushing behind those corners there. That's it. And that's where the point does come in useful. And if this becomes a little bit blunt, you can simply cut a piece away and that renews your point again. So quite useful. And then onto just a longer stretch again.
And the work we did early where we folded the fabric over, that's now paying off because that means that it's already partially there and it's kind of nice and neat along the top lines. There we go. So I'm just going to run around and check there's no last phrase. There we go. So there we have it, our hexagon lampshade. I think you'll agree. Oh, wrong way around. It looks absolutely lovely. So just to show you what our finished shade would look like, I'll just um, take that one off there. There we go. That looks fantastic. If you did want to make a pendant, I'll just use this one here as an example. We also have these diffusers. So if you imagine this this way round, and this also kind of reinforces what I was saying about the directional fabric, that this can switch either way. All you simply need to do is bend this little, drop it in, and then when you turn your shade over, this simply now sits in the bottom and that just diffuses the light so it gives you a much softer lighting effect and also makes it look even more professional because you can't see inside to the shade so a really nice addition to your homemade lampshade. I hope you can make these now for either yourself, for your family or friends or we've inspired you to maybe start up your own small creative lampshade making business. Thanks for watching.